I think there's two ways primarily. Uh, firstly is a direct reduction in our operating costs, which obviously saved us money and allowed us to reinvest in, in the business. The second is I think we've found it's a way of engaging with our teams in the businesses and they've really found the challenge of how can we do things differently, a very rewarding challenge and I think that's part of engaging and motivating our teams. I think there are two, two main barriers for us moving further forward than we already have. Um, the first is the lack of clarity about regulation because we can't at the moment put a price on carbon, for example, that would allow us to look at certain investments differently than, than we can today. I think the second one has been the degree of difficulty in actually just bringing together all the people that are actually involved in this topic because this doesn't naturally belong just to one person. So if you're going to change, for example, the way we run our stores, that's a pretty broad set of things you have to change. So it's quite a complex set of changes to bring about. My vision of a low-carbon world is, is uh, fundamentally a better place where we have lower impact on our world in, in, in a whole set of ways, but that we can still have a rich and rewarding life and, uh, and we can fulfill our ambitions. I don't think it's a reason to sort of go back to the, the, the cave, as it were, or, or wear a hair shirt. These are opportunities, and they're opportunities for business and, and jobs and development of skills, which I think are really exciting. I think the key message for, for business is that these are opportunities that we should be embracing and that leading companies that embrace these opportunities will do well and there are some great, great changes out there and don't wait for this to be done unto you.